plus Google Workspace for Education program. And then I am being joined today by Justin Zemliak at Indiana University, Chuck Beheim at Cornell University, and John Kelly at University of Notre Dame. And um, they will be talking about uh, quota management on their campuses. And um, feel free to use the Q&A. We are going to open up the mics uh, once we get to the Q&A section of the webinar and um, answer all your questions at that time. Um, so first of all, a little bit about the Internet to Net Plus Google Workspace for Education program. Um, we held the, the first session we held, um, had a full overview of the program. Um, I will just mention that we um, signed the agreement with Google in 2021. Um, and many of you are um, uh, subscribers to the Net Plus uh, program for Google Workspace for Education. We do have a service advisory board and you can see the universities who are a part of the advisory board listed there. The advisory board meets on a monthly basis and we work very closely with Google on um, typically uh, questions or um, um, work related to enhancements to the platform. And also we work with Google on the service offerings as part of the Net Plus program. Um, in addition to that, we have the Cloud Storage Working Group. There are over 60 universities who are a part of the Cloud Storage Working Group. Um, this group meets monthly as well. And um, I listed there a link to the working group. And again, we'll share this presentation after the fact and you'll be able to access those links um, and um, a number of months ago we actually created four working groups one of them being the quota management working group and the presentation today is is um, uh, part of the work that has been done over the last several months uh, we had a presentation last week on the provision of accounts, and we have a couple of other presentations coming up from um, uh, coming up uh, next week uh, from the other two groups, communications and uh, data migration tools. Um, I would like to take a moment and recognize those who have been um, helping with the quota management and. Um, with that, I am going to hand it over to Justin at uh, Indiana University. Hello, everyone. Hopefully I'm not too echoey. I'm actually in an old phone booth in our student union that's been converted to a study area. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, so thanks for all everyone for attending. I'm Justin Zimlack, Director of Teaching Learning Technologies at Indiana University. And for our conversation today, my team administers Google at Indiana University. Um, I think one of the reasons why uh, I offer to be a lead um, in this quota management group is uh, I use kind of been ahead of the game when it comes to data. Um, previously, I thought I'd put up here, you know, where we were as of last year in January. Um, we had 21 petabytes of data in our Google instance, uh, almost 500K user accounts, you know, current, former, perspective. Seems like uh, anything we've had over the past 15 years was sitting in there. Um, we had student email in Gmail as well, uh, and but we had faculty and staff in Outlook Online. Um, we had no push at the university for any preference of storage uh, options. The only difference was uh, if you're a faculty and staff, you were in Outlook. If you were a student who wasn't employed at the university, you're in Gmail. Um, and I think it's important to note that we had just completed a box migration in the summer of 2021 where we migrated three petabytes of data to Google and Microsoft. We actually allowed our users to make a choice. Um, about half of that three petabytes was user data, so about 1.5 terabytes. Um, and even though 10% of our users chose Google Drive and 90% of the users were either chosen or auto-migrated to Microsoft, 50% of our data actually went to Google Drive. So just to give you an idea, our power users really chose Google um, when it was all said and done after our box migrations. 
Um, and I thought I'd be good here after our box migration to show kind of where our storage footprint was. So um, with Google having an individual limit of five gigabytes per the announcement that we all saw, um, our, our university and our university had a total of 600 terabytes that we needed to get down to. Well, we were, um, as you see in May of 2021, at 1.56 petabytes. And by December 2021, we had already gone up to two petabytes. So uh, half a petabyte in just uh, about six, seven months of growth. And what we had seen is those power users had started to really grow and use the service. Share drives had already boomed and almost doubled in over that time span. So we took an assessment of where we were at, and we saw that about 20,000 IU users had over five gigabytes of storage. So we had uh, a, a decent task, though that was a small chunk of our total user base, a large amount of users who we actually needed to get down to five gigabytes. Um, and we had 226 users who had 800 terabytes. So just to give you an idea, and I'm sure a lot of you are dealing with this as well, we had a small chunk of users taking up the majority of space in our instance as well. So with that snapshot, we can go on to kind of what we talked about. So at the university, we kind of, uh, we took it to the university leadership and we actually had a plan to invest in the uh, licensing with Google and our leadership actually decided to, that with our footprint and other storage services that we would actually reduce um, our storage in Google and stick with it on the free tier, right? So uh, one of the interesting things here is, you know, so when we talk about models and John and Chuck talk earlier, we're currently on the free tier. Um, we don't pay for any additional licenses except for a special use case that we created for shared drives. Um, so we had a task of getting from two petabytes to essentially 600 terabytes. Um, so here's what we decided. Google users would remain in uh, for IU teaching and learning use cases, but Microsoft would be the large scale storage adoption option at our university. Um, we migrated student email completely to Exchange Online, so now everyone had email in one platform. Um, we deleted former user accounts in our instance, and you'll see I shared a bar graph of our past six months usage. You'll see a couple of big drops, um, and that was one of those drops. We created a new policy for around account retention after users leave IU, and when we would delete the data, and we determined what populations needed quotas and when those quotas would be enabled for these users and it's everyone. We put quotas on everyone at our institution. <laughs> so, um, and really we put them in buckets of separated users, users are under five gigabytes and users over five gigabytes. Um, those are the really the core buckets that we utilize. Um, and then we also need to determine a plan for share drives because we had about 1600 share drives, which is probably small compared to what I've heard from other schools, but we were um, lucky in the sense that we really restricted who could create share drives over the past couple of years. Um, so that helped us keep that number down. So if we look at the next slide, what we're really here for is to talk about quotas, right? And what did we do at IU? So we really took a, a time-based approach for quotas. Um, we'll hear a couple of different versions here later. Um, but for us, it was more about, hey, communication, communication, communication. If that wasn't our biggest complaint from the box migration, it was talk to us, more communication, not less. Um, and so we actually started all the way back in April, March, sending out communications, delete your data, get ready to migrate your data. And then in July of 2022, we started doing administrative moves. And that was really the first time that we started planning on setting quotas. Um, and it was good timing because not long around then was when we actually got quota management from Google. And what we did was we, anyone who auto migrated, we said 30 days after your migration, you're going to get a five gigabyte quota. So we'll move your stuff to trash. You have 30 days to manage it. After that, you get a quota. So we're starting to box people in there. Then on August 15th, we said all separated accounts with a zero byte quota and planned on deleting those on November 1st. So we started a large messaging campaign to all of our current faculty and staff saying, hey, if you worked with somebody previously, look at your shared with me, find out what the, what's going on. If you're using files, you'll get that warning saying, I can't edit or delete this file or excuse me, I can't edit or create new files in this area. So hopefully that would alert them that a separated user owns a file that they are. And then we had a process for users to take ownership of those files as well. And then August 26th, we set a five gigabyte limit for all IUMI drives that were under four gigabytes. We chose that because we wanted to give people from four to five gigabytes the flexibility to still manage storage. Some people were moving data from other areas, other accounts, shared drives even. So we wanted to at least give them a little leeway um, in what they were doing. And then on uh, September 22nd, about a month later, we set a five giga gigabyte limit for all new users coming into the university. We actually realized we didn't plan for the incoming freshmen and the new employees that were coming in. And so 
we set a date and said, going forward, any new accounts will be set at the five gigabyte limit. And then on October 3rd, we set a five gigabyte quota for Google accounts from four to that 4.99 gigabytes of data. So covering that small gap saying, hey, you've had enough time. And during this whole time, we've I, I think, uh, Dana, what do we have? Uh, uh, hundreds of pages of communications that I've shared with uh, the group that we sent out um, to our users, letting them know weekly, uh, these are the dates and what's coming up. Um, and self-manage your data, auto-migrate your data, move to uh, auxiliary storage options, GCP, whatever. Um, and this all led up to, on August 3rd, us setting a five gigabyte quota for Google, or excuse me, on November 21st, um, setting a, a five gigabyte quota to all of our users who had opted for manual migrations or deletions. So anyone who did automated migration, they were already getting that five gigabyte quota after 30 days. We had a lot of users that I'm going to self delete, self migrate. Well, we said by November 21st, you're getting this quota. And then on December 1st, if they were still over, we actually did a forced migration of all their data to Microsoft to help get them under. And then on January 24th, we actually set a five gigabyte quota for all the remaining users. Um, and it worked pretty well. I will say we started out, like I said earlier, with 20,000 users, and I'll have a slide here later that I'll talk about where we ended up. And then Dan, if we go to the next slide, um, I, I really wanted to also focus on shared drives because that was a large chunk of our data, uh, almost 0.5 terabytes when we started this process. Um, it was determined that users that wanted to keep in shared drives had to pay for their storage to stay in shared drives. I actually worked with, I saw Leighton was on the call, um, from Google, and we came up with a process where you just could buy teaching and learning licenses from um, one of our third party providers of the Google teaching and learning licenses, and then we would apply those licenses to our shared drives. We started out with 1,600. We actually ended up with about 160 that paid for storage in the end. Everyone else, we worked with them to migrate their data off, and we set dates for when we would set quota on those groups as well, too. So we gave shared drives because usually that's institutional data inside shared drives, a longer time to get things going. And we waited until January 23rd, or January 2023, excuse me, before we actually created the OU around shared drives and we bucketed them into paid and unpaid versions. And then we had sub OUs where based off how much teaching and learning licenses people would buy, we would then put the appropriate quota on that OU and put the shared drives into that OU. So if somebody just bought one teaching and learning licenses, that was 100 gigabytes of storage. If they bought 10, they were putting an OU that had uh, one terabyte of storage. Um, so on January 11th of 2023, and again, a large communication plan more than six months prior to this, over and over again, blasting our users and owners, co-owners, contributors in the shared drive saying, we're going to set your quotas to zero if you haven't indicated you're going to pay. And on February 1st, we started taking uh, storage requests for users who said they were going to pay, and we left them with no quota. And then they had the entire month of February to get their purchase orders in for that storage request. And if they didn't have it in by the end of the month, all of those shared drives were set to a zero gigabyte quota as well. And this was all part of our timeline process of boxing in all these users. So at this point, by from starting in July to the end of February, we had had a quota on every user population following this timeline. And I'll share some links earlier because our knowledge base outlines our full timeline. Um, and then if we go to the next page, Dana. Here's just where we're at today. So we went from 2.1 petabytes, which was our largest. We're now at 358 terabytes of data. As you can see from the charts there, you'll see our drops down, huge, few huge drops when we deleted large amounts of shared drives and data. Um, and where we went from our uh, various areas there, I'll let you all read that there. Um, we actually still have 2,400 users who are still over that five gigabyte quota. But as you see, um, we didn't let that impact what we're going to do. And we've chosen not to delete that user data since we're well under our storage allocation now based off our process. Um, and we're just going to let those nationally matriculate off unless we see an issue in the future. And then on the next page, I just shared a few knowledge base links that'll be out there on the slide where we have a full timeline of everything that we did from communications um, as well as dates that we set, um, managing data owned by those who have left IU, managing Google Photos, which was a big one as well too, since we don't have a process to moving that data out, um, along with just general information about our process and what we've done. Because I know that I use further ahead than a lot of other people in this group. So um, I, I'm more than happy to share out what we've done and where we're at and where we've been. So with that, um, that's everything I have for our area, and I look forward to the questions.
and I'll hand it up. You want me to hand it off to Chuck? I'll hand it off to Chuck next to talk about Cornell okay. University's experience. Thank you, Justin. I'm Chuck Beheim. I'm um, the service architect for uh, Google and uh, also take care of Box and other storage tools and, and other collaboration tools. So uh, we started from a position of we were going to pay uh, the licenses to have the paid tier of storage, which in our case is about 1.2 petabytes. Um, and so that was decided pretty early on in the process that, that it didn't seem feasible to get down to um, the free tier. Um, and um, so we, we decided we're going to pay and then manage down to that. And we're going to keep this as a large viable part of the um, service offering. Um, so our initial goals were uh, stop the problem from getting worse, uh, put caps on people where they are uh, without um, preventing them from working. So we didn't want to suddenly shut the door on everybody and say, you can't work anymore until you fix something. So we, we capped them at their current um, storage allocations and spent the time at, uh, socializing the idea that the age of unlimited is over and you need to start thinking about what you're going to do with it, whether there's free or paid alternatives. <clears throat> um, and, and the other goal we had with quotas is uh, give people an incentive that their storage is now more limited here in Google than it is in our other two services. So if you want to expand, you want to uh, store more than you've got, uh, think about moving your stuff over to Box or OneDrive. So our ideal was we'd love to give people a cap about 10% above their current usage. So they're, they're at no more than 90% of their uh, quota allocation. Um, give them enough room so they're not in the warning zone uh, for usage right out of the box. Uh, in reality, the quotas are set at the entire OU or group level, so you can't be as precise as 10% over. So we created a set of uh, quota groups at 15 gigabytes, 30 gigabytes, and then 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And then as we got bigger, the uh, space the groups went 100, 150, 250, um, 200, 250, 300, so on, um, because there's just fewer people in the bucket, and we're going to be communicating with those people directly anyway. Um, we put people in the best fit group for their current usage, which is going to be a little bit sloppy. So somebody who is at 35 gig that's right at the 90% level, so they went in the 40 gig group. Somebody with 39 gigabytes went in the 50 group, gigabyte group uh, because they were over that 90% line for the 40. Uh, so one person gets um, five gig of headroom, the other get 11. Um, what can you do about it? That's, that's just the way it is. Um, so we ended up with about, um, I think it was about 40 quota groups at different levels. <clears throat> um, and I'll talk about some other groups later. Um, so, so we have staff, students, and alumni in the same organization, um, but their curves looked pretty similar. So we took a hard look at this. Um, the, the blue line shows where our bump in users are, so that you're, you're, most users are hovering right around two or three gigabytes. Um, the uh, light blue area is the percentile of users. So um, you can see that by the time you get up to 19, 20 gigabytes, you've got most of the users below that. Uh, and then the light green area is the uh, cumulative storage. So most of your storage is above that cutoff in relatively few users. So this is a graphical representation I was using to explain this to people. So go ahead. Okay, so the way we structured it is we gave the staff and student OUs a 15 gigabyte base allocation since most people were under that already. 
Um, since the alumni, we really wanted them to get all their storage out. We said, yeah, this was supposed to be just for email and the, and the Google Drive has been a nice ride for you, but we can't afford to continue that. So we gave them a five gigabyte base allocation with a plan to get out. Um, and, and initially that was supposed to be this summer. That looks like it's gonna get extended actually till next summer to give them time to get out, but still before we start having to pay for storage. Um, and then we created the groups and um, we gave them a nice name like user quota 30 gigabytes, uh, which made it, and I kept it all in units of gigabytes. So it was really easy to parse those out with a script because there's no API to get somebody's quota or a group's quota and find out what it is. So I had to embed it in the, the group name uh, and then go through and by hand assign a quota to each one of these groups, which is one reason why we stuck with fewer groups rather than more. It'd be lovely to have more, more groups and more granularity, but the uh, tedium of going through and typing a quota uh, in the console for each one of these groups was a little bit too much. Um, uh, if we ever get an API to uh, set and, and query quotas, then that opens the door for perhaps uh, proliferating quota groups and having them better fit. Uh, so then we ran, no, oh, not quite, back up. Uh, then we ran a script, uh, affectionately called the sorting hat which uh, placed everyone who didn't fit in that base allocation into the best fit group. 90% uh, of the staff and students and 75% of the alumni fit in their base OU allocation. So uh, we only had to deal with uh, a smaller number of accounts uh, getting put into quota groups. Okay. And then the same script, which in its nightly incarnation gets called the squeezer, um, goes through and says, oh, this person has reduced their storage. We're going to move them down into a lower group. So uh, it just keeps auto adjusting them down uh, to uh, a lower group as they remove their storage. Um, and we just tell them you know, that that's our goal is you need to use less storage. We need to get you down to, uh, for staff and students, we need to get them down to under 100 gig. Uh, and alumni down to the five gig target. Okay. So far that's been working smoothly. Uh, the service desk gets a little uh, web tool where they can just grant a, a request for staff and students up to 100 gigabytes. It doesn't have to get reviewed for approval. Uh, that's an automatic. Um, anything asking for more than that, get referred to us and reviewed. Um, you know, we ask questions like, can't you do it someplace else? You know, is, yeah, okay, you don't like Box as much as Google, but you get more storage there. Would you try to use it? There's a few things like Google Collab, which uh, don't allow any other data source than Google. So those go into one bucket of consideration. Um, and if they're going to graduate before the deadline anyway, we can be a little bit more liberal uh, because their account is going to get deprovisioned before we have to pay for it. Alumni cannot request increases. They're, they're going down only. Uh, if they ask for a grant, um, then we put them into a similarly named group called user grant 100 gigabytes. Um, there's fewer of those, uh, but along the same pattern. Uh, so they also grant the quota they say they grant, but they don't auto adjust. So somebody doesn't get granted a quota today and then by tonight have it automatically reduced to their current usage. So that's how the grants work. Out of all this, and we've been running this for nine months, slightly more than 100 users have asked for and been granted increases. So that's not too bad. And next slide. And just a word on shared drives. We don't have very many of them. We've got under 50. Uh, I think it's under 40, actually. Um, so we didn't have a huge adoption to worry about. We just created shared drives OU and then sub, sub OUs with the quota name appended to it. And we just put, be, put 
shared drives and they write quota and at the moment just moving them by hand because uh, we haven't had enough usage uh, to warrant automation. Um, that's all I had about shared drives. So on to the next one. And I just, oh, there we go. Almost lost my internet connection. Uh, so this is our tracking graph. It shows that um, where we started making the announcements, we started on a downward, downward trend. Um, and that's the, the um, I don't know what the name of that color is to the right um, is uh, is the target bowl that we have before we start to pay um, and the uh, the blue area is the alumni you know, so you can see that the alumni is a large part of our problem so getting the alumni out leaves room for the active community campus to have almost enough room to work and you take care of the few outliers um, in the staff and faculty and students who are above 100 gigabytes, and we're pretty much at our goal. So I think we're on a, on a good slope, even though it's a little bit of a slow start. I expect to see that accelerating as we continue to communicate and as that deadline gets nearer. And that's my last slide. So over to John Kelly. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Justin. So my name's John Kelly. I work at the University of Notre Dame. And I'm one of three people that helps support Google here at the university. So we are a Google first school. We want people to work in Google. Um, I will add that uh, since I did not put it in the slide, but you go to the next slide there, please, Danny. Uh, is since I didn't put it in the slide, but since Justin and, and Chuck have mentioned it, uh, Notre Dame is has a separate alumni domain from our nd.edu domain. So alumni are not in our Notre Dame domain. So they have their own process where they needed to get down and things of that nature. We only deal with faculty, staff, and students, affiliates, and things of that nature. But we are a Google first university. We have been since we went to that for faculty and staff in the summer of 2014. We do have Box and OneDrive and other services that people can use. But we have made the decision that we want people to use Google for collaboration now and in the future. One of the reasons is, one of the main reasons is, is that's where our Gmail and our calendar is. We want it all integrated. We don't have Gmail and calendar. We don't have mail and calendar in any of the, the OneDrive system. It's all in Google. So we have purchased Education Plus licenses and we will purchase additional storage up to the point where we kind of like get this nice little kind of equilibrium on where we want to be. Okay, so I want to give you a sense of where our totals were or at the end of February. So you can see we've got, this is for, our, again, our ND.edu domain. You can see Drive, of course, is the highest, and Shared Drive is about 50% less of it, and we'll talk a little bit as we go there. So I just want to give you a quick where we are. We're at, this was a, a month or so ago. Right now, we're at 1.95, so I just tell people we're around 2 petabytes of data at the moment. So our default allocations, we are going to avoid the word quotas when we do our communications and things of that nature. And I'll, and I'll call out uh, Sarah at North Carolina State that brought this up on the last community call and was asking, what are people using besides quota? We had not had that discussion in our team that was working on this. Um, so we decided that we we're gonna use things like allocations and allotments. Um, so when it comes to individual accounts, we are gonna set our, our limit for accounts at 100 gigabyte, that's going to be default allocation. And some of the bullet points you see in here, and these are just slides that we use to present this to our senior leadership and IT leadership um, around campus. And then anyone who's over that amount, we are going to have exception groups. We're a little bit different than Cornell and the fact that you'll see later, but we have maybe eight exception groups because our peers on, um, on different levels above 100 are much, much wider than, than what Cornell is using. And that's fine, everybody has their own way. For shared drives, we are going to set the default allocation to be 250 gig. Again, anyone that's over, we're going to create some exception OUs. And at the moment, that looks like it's also going to be in the neighborhood of around six or so. And we will have a request process. We're working on that this month. We use ServiceNow. We'll put a request process out there where people have to ask to move up to any uh, tier above 100 or if they're in the 300 gig into the next tier. Okay. 
So we first started with wide default allocation of 100 gigabytes for individual accounts. If you just look at the, the little graph there, looking at our data as of the end of February, 95.9% .9 of the accounts that were in our domain were under 100 gig. So we want people to work there. We want people to not have to worry about, am I running out of quota? Do I need to do things like in the old day of, of clearing out their mail or something along that lines to continue to work? We want them to work. So we set it high. And you can see, as others have pointed out, that 70% of our university's consumption are in the accounts that are basically the 4.1% there that are over 100 gig, which is not a surprise because I imagine it's like that for everybody. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these types of tiers for above 100 gig. And you can see right now that's the number of accounts. We're going with active accounts, not the ones that are inactive and things of that nature, because we'll deal with those in a different way. But on 100 gig, you can see again, 95.9. We're going to go with the next tier. We're calling them tiers or limits. We're going to go from once you go over 100, we're going to put you up to 300. We're going to allow you to continue to grow. This way, we don't have to make the request very often. And then here's our other buckets. Once we get above one terabyte, we'll look at the data um, before we set the actual um, allocations for folks. And we may create a couple groups just to handle two or three people that are really out there in terms of the storage, in terms of that. We have a few people that are outliers. Um, so we may just um, put one person in a group or two people in a group, depending on what the data shows us in another month or two. We will be, uh, we have started an announcement to campus just as a way to start having people look at this kind of content and we're calling it Cam Conquer Your Clutter. That started in March, it runs to the end of April. At the end of April, somewhere in the last two weeks of April, last week of April, we were going to send out the announcement to campus that we were going to start putting um, allocations on all accounts in Google. We have not announced that yet. Uh, you guys will hear it before they do, but we have not announced that yet because we are doing other things and we are basically starting our process where you can see IU is way ahead of us and, and Cornell is ahead of us. This is where we are in our process. We will be implementing, sorry, we will be implementing our default allocations if you go back one, um, starting that Monday night after commencement. So our commencement is that weekend, Monday is the 22nd. Myself and another person will be looking at data that we pulled that day and putting people into various groups and the same things when it comes to share drives. And then we'll be setting the, the quotas that night so that it basically will show up for people. We figure that night or actually the Tuesday, the 23rd. Uh, and anybody, uh, just like some, some of the others, anybody with a count greater at 89% of their limit or above, we're just going to automatically put them in the next tier to give them room to grow. Okay. So how about share drives? Why the default of 250 gig? Again, we want people working here. And actually, we prefer people when they're working in their department, when it's not their own personal type of content. And again, we try to limit that is we want people using share drives. Since team drives came into, uh, it was called team drives, of course, at first, when, when team drives came into place, we implemented that in January of 2018. We left it open. Anybody can create a share drive. And it's still that way at this point in time. Anyone can create a share drive. And you can see we have at the end of um, 2022, we were at 10,000 share drives. Um, again, when you look at the content we have, we only have 44 of those drives that are greater than 250. And the average size is around 33 gig. So we'll create, again, five or six different OUs for the people above 250 and put those in separate shared drives once we set the allocation at 250 for a shared drive. Again, we're gonna pull all this data on actually the 22nd for the report. We know it's usually about two days older, but then that's when we'll start going. Here's the groups and start creating people, putting them in Google groups for the uh, my drive quota. And then we'll do the same thing for the, the OUs um, for the shared drives. And then next, so here's our storage reduction strategies. We will, uh, we've will we started some conversations, more like uh, uh, surveys to some of our top customers just to get a sense of what they're storing out there. Not a big surprise. The biggest users are usually either folks that are doing a lot of video stuff or uh, research. Um, we have our campaign, your Conquer Your Clutter campaign. I put a link there if you want to go to our website to see what that's about. We will start soon here in this month we'll start deleting old accounts. So students have had an account since around 2009. 
some faculty and staff at the back that far, but normally, like I said, faculty and staff, not normally, faculty and staff started getting uh, Google in the summer of 2014. So we're gonna start deleting some of those older accounts from 2009 through 2015, 2016. And we're not gonna do any type of communication on that. We're gonna start with students and just delete their, their content. Uh, we are working on our life cycle management process, something we've talked about for a long time since I've been here a while. Um, we are actually gonna do it, where we actually go through the whole process and get rid of accounts. We're going to finish this process during this project. Um, and then we are also setting our default allocations. And again, all these things are happening in parallel at this point. And then I think I have one more slide. We just want to get a sense of where we were when Google first announced it. You can see our blue number was where we we're allocated. That's when it first started out at 100 terabytes. Um, and then a year later, that's when they started doing the thing about greater than 20,000 active accounts. We ended up somewhere in the 460 range for where our terabyte storage is. You can see the growth we've had over the last couple of years. We've been growing at about 12%. Through some deletions and the, the conquer your clutter campaign and things of that nature, our goal by the end of June is to see if we can get a reduction of 500 terabytes. That's the goal. We'll see how that works. And then by early uh, 2014, our kind of goal overall is to keep having storage go down. We're going to purchase so much. We're going to give ourselves more than a 12% growth, but we're not going to purchase like 100% more than we need. This, again, has cost involved. So we're thinking of it as just like the baby bear approach. Purchase just enough to allow the, our domain not to hit a number, but not so much that we're paying for extra that we're not using. And we know this is a yearly cost and then we know there's going to be a new cost each year as the growth continues because again we want use people using google we want people using share drives and things of that nature i believe that's my last slide dana yes thank you john um we do have a slide of re on uh, resources um, and again, we'll be sharing this presentation after the fact, but uh, we have links here to the wiki site, uh, the work group email, um, those listed on um, uh, the slide I share with the members of the group are a part of that work group email. Um, the next is a document which was put together by um, a number of people uh, who are part of the community um, with, with um, information that is helpful for Google Workspace administrators. Um, we wanted to have a link to the deprovision of accounts presentation from the session last week. Um, if you go to the registration page, you will see uh, links to the presentations and resources from all the sessions. And um, I put a plug in for the session on Thursday which is going to be led by Google and it's going to be focused on security. Um, and then uh, a few other helpful links there, what counts as storage, how to buy more storage. Um, and with that, um, we're going to Q&A and we'll be opening up the mics. Um, I am going to stop sharing and um, Dana, did you want me to run through some of the questions already there? Because I